G'day, Starlo here. Welcome to Stepping Stones to Fishing Success, brought to you by Shimano. In this series, we're going to get back to the absolute basics of fishing so that you can get out there into the wonderful Australian outdoors and catch some fish and have a great time. And what better place to start than in one of Australia's favourite fishing environments, a surf beach. Beach fishing's popular right around the southern half of the country, but a lot of people seem to struggle with it. They don't know where to fish, they don't know how to rig, they can't feel the bites because of the surge. Let's see if I can help you with all of those problems. One of the first tips I want to give you is, don't lie your gear down in the sand. Look, Shimano build fantastic equipment, but it's not meant to be filled with sand. Just get yourself a couple of rod holders. I just use old offcuts of PVC, and I drop my rods into those when I'm rigging up. If I've got a spare rod, keeps them up out of the sand, and they'll last much, much longer. I'll give you another tip that I never see anybody talk about anywhere, and I think it's one of the most important things in fishing, and it's the biggest mistake that I see beginners make. They wind their rig right up to the tip of their rod, and then they have to put the rod down and walk to the end of the rod. Have a look what happens to the reel back there when I do it. It drops down and down, and eventually it ends up in the sand, and they stand here and rig. There's absolutely no reason to do that. When you want to rig up, just let some line out so that your rig swings straight into your hand. You can stick your rod under your arm if you want, or you can drop it in your rod holder for baiting up or re-rigging. Simple stuff, but boy oh boy, it makes a big difference to your fishing. Okay, come over here and I'll show you how to bait up. So I'm just using simple shop-bought pilchards. They're a pretty good bait for a whole lot of things on the beach. And I'm going to break that pilchard roughly in half. You can cut it if you want to, but I actually like to break it because it leaves nice rough ends and plenty of oil and blood comes out. I'll keep the head end for another bait. Now I've actually got two hooks on here. You don't need that, but it doesn't hurt to cover your bases. I'm going to put both hooks into the bait and then I'm going to do a rather sneaky little thing. I'm going to throw a half hitch around the tail of the bait. Just make a backhand loop, put it over the tail of the bait, not around the shank of the hook, just around the bait. Pull it tight and that'll really help to keep that bait on the hooks. So the other thing that a lot of people wonder is where do you start on a beach? They're a bit of a marine desert. It can be hard to find where the fish are concentrated. You'll hear people talk about reading the beach. And all that really means is getting up on a bit of a higher vantage point, ideally on the low tide, and looking for the holes and the gutters and the sandbars. You'll be able to see them. Deeper water shows up as darker water, and it's not usually breaking. So if there's unbroken dark water, it's quite deep. You'll find gutters, you'll find holes. Everyone gets fixated on wanting to fish in the deepest hole they can find. Quite often the edges of the gutters and the holes where they come up onto shallower ground are actually better spots to fish. And I'll give you another big tip. Everyone on the beach puts a massive sinker on and tries to punch a hole in the horizon. They think they've got to cast halfway to New Zealand to catch fish. Uh-uh. A lot of times the fish are riding close, so don't cast too far. I see a lot of people fish over the top of the fish. Try a few short casts as well. You can see I'm just holding the line here on the end of my finger. It really helps me to feel the bites. There's a lot of surging and pulling going on there with the surf, but with the braided line, which I'd strongly suggest you try, you'll feel those bites really well. There's so little stretch in the braid that you will feel what's going on. But stay in contact if you need to pick up a little bit of slack. Oh, 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 oh. yep, he's playing with the bait, playing with the bait. Ah, about time. Woo! 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 <laughs> oh, that's a hot fish. Oh, he's jumping out there. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Just brilliant. 
Now, letting the rod soak up all the lunges. They're notoriously good at throwing hooks, Australian salmon. But if you keep a nice tight line on them and keep a bend in the rod, it really helps. He really screams some line off to begin with. Just take your time when you've got a decent fish on. People sort of panic and they want to get the fish in here as quick as possible. That's how you break lines and pull hooks. Oh, that's a good run. <laughs> Such a smooth drag on this Nasky. He's jumped probably half a dozen times. And that usually tires them out a bit, but this one's, oh, wow. Oh, and he's gone. You don't win them all, you threw the hooks. And that's going to happen. You're not going to get every fish. That one managed to get the bait off the hook. But, you know, it really doesn't worry me because I know that that bait breaking up out there in the surf is going to be attracting more and more fish. There's a hungry one out there. Now I just made a nice relaxed cast, probably went 40 metres at the most, but I know I'm in a little bit of a gutter there, and that's where the fish are going to be patrolling up and down. So now it's just a matter of waiting for the bite. So I've hooked a really good fish here, and I've seen it jump a couple of times, so I know it's a salmon, it's a big Australian salmon. And I'm just taking my time, don't panic and try and pull it in against the the backwash of the waves and everything else. Just let your gear work for you and you should be able to land him. I've got my drag set so the fish can take line when it starts to get close to breaking point. I'm only using quite light gear here. I've got 10 pound braid and a 16 pound leader on. And this is a good fish. Now I just use the waves, don't try and drag him against the backwash. Use a wave to wash him up. Not quite ready yet. Okay, this wave looks good. Walk up with him, and there we go. Oh, too much fun. I actually thought, thought he was going to be bigger than that, but he's full of fight. Beautiful Australian salmon. <laughs> you can see why I love beach fishing. It's so simple and so much fun if you keep it light and stay mobile.